Hello. So I'm off to a great start because I've just recorded a long video and my camera died and it didn't save the video so I had to start all over again, which is great. Um, basically I've come back to this channel to film another video to update you on everything that's gone on in the past two years. I think it's been well over two years since I last recorded a video um, and there is a few reasons for that. Shortly after I filmed the last video um, I wasn't in a very good place. A lot had gone on and not only did we not have very much time to film a video or say we, I, I didn't have very much time and when I did have time I just wasn't motivated um, and I can't stand editing, I cannot do it So and that it takes up way too much time so I've decided in any future videos I'm just not going to edit them so you're just going to have to get used to me just rambling on because a lot of the time I'd cut out big chunks where I'd just gone off and talked about random stuff. Um, so I'm not going to do that this time so the video just might be a little bit longer, might be boring but I can't be dealing with editing because I'm not very good at it. Um, so I've written a massive list of stuff that's happened in the past couple of years because there's no way I can think off the top, of, well I remember off the top of my head in order everything that's gone on. Um, so I'm just going to go straight into it because it's quite long and I don't really want this video to be too long. So I, can't, I think in the last video or videos um, we hadn't had any diagnosis yet, I know we hadn't and um, we were just try. it was just trial and error and we would tried progesterone and blood thinners and obviously none of it had worked. Um, well since those videos we have had two more losses um, so I'll just I'll go off this list and I'll just talk about in the right order what's happened since those videos so in September 2020 I was told that I have elevated NK cells so and we were told that that was um, most likely the reason for our losses so as soon as we were told that we were over the moon we thought this was finally the reason um, we could be treated for it and then end up having a healthy baby I've seen quite a few women on my Instagram page that have high NK cells and have gone on to have a baby because the medication has worked some people it hasn't worked for yet but there's always different ways you can tweak it and whatever so I was really hopeful about that so if you don't know what NK cells are everybody's got NK cells in the body and obviously I'm no doctor so if I'm wrong then let me know um, everybody's got NK cells and they are good for fighting off infections well that's what they do they fight off coughs cold things like that just anything any foreign bodies does that make sense foreign bodies I don't know you know what I mean um, so when you get pregnant your body thinks that it needs to fight it off it thinks it's like a disease um, when you've got high NK cells, when there's too many. Did I say that? I don't know. Oh god. See this is when I would have already edited that, that chunk out of this video and I'm three minutes in. Anyway, it's probably best if you just google it because that's the best way to find out what they are. Um, so the, the medication that we were told to try was intralipids and hydroxychloroquine. Um, I think this was around the time that COVID had just happened. I don't bloody know. No, I don't know. Anyway, when they did the NK cell test, I think they te they did a special one where they tested what the NK cell, how the NK cells would react with intralipids, and it was the best um, outcome. So that's why we were told intralipids and hydroxychloroquine. I think it was just like a backup thing. I'm not actually sure. Um, so with the intralipid infusions we were told to have them or I was told to have them on every time I ovulated. So when I was ovulating we went over to London to have those done each time. Um, and we had those with both of our next two pregnancies. So my fifth pregnancy was in January 2021 and I went over there when I ovulated, got the... Um, infusion found out I was pregnant and we thought it was great because we just had the infusion we had everything was right timing um, and then we were due to have our next infusion which was like four weeks later because you have them every four weeks until you're 16 weeks and then I came on so it was a chemical pregnancy it was very early and obviously we were gutted um, 
because we really hoped that now we had a diagnosis that this was going to be it and we were going to be on the right track and it just it was but then we also um thought that maybe the dosage of the medication i was on wasn't high enough or whatever so um our consultant did up the intralipid dosage for the next time we tried which was the following time I ovulated we just tried straight away and I was I got pregnant that time as well so I literally got pregnant the following month which happened to be on my birthday the 7th of February 2021 we found out I was pregnant with our sixth um, and the most amazing thing was I was pregnant at the same time as my sister my sister told us a few weeks before that she was pregnant and I was like nine or ten weeks behind her and it was just amazing it felt too good to be true because um obviously I've always wanted to be pregnant at the same time as my sister well bo we both have um, and we thought maybe this was it maybe this was our time I mean it was our sixth pregnancy and I thought we surely we can't be that unlucky to have another loss um but obviously it was too good to be true and I miscarried that pregnancy on the 19th of March um which was rubbish but with this pregnancy we had surgical management so we had surgical management with our third pregnancy as well but they didn't take they either didn't take enough um tissue or they didn't take the right tissue or something and we didn't get any results back from it which we were gutted about because we were hoping to find answers from that as well um so yeah we did surgical management with this one and it came back that the um embryo had trisomy 20 or the tissue or whatever it was came back with trisomy 20 um, and we also found out that it was a boy which was like I didn't expect to f see that on the form and it was so hard to read at first I thought it meant that um, it said male and I thought it meant that the reason the tissue or the baby had trisomy 20 was because of Josh <laughs> um, but it turned out that it was a baby boy and it it made it, it, I don't know, I, fe I thought it was really hard finding that out. Um, and also because my sister was having a boy as well, I just thought, yeah, so it has been so hard to watch my nephew grow up this past year, but it's also been lovely, it's strange, it's a very strange situation to be in. Um, but anyway, so because the pregnancy, we found out the pregnancy had trisomy 20, we were told to have a karyotype in blood test which tests um, mine and Josh's chromosomes to see if there's anything wrong with us as to what maybe that's why it was causing maybe all of our losses have had um, issues with the chromosomes we don't know because this is the only one we've had results from um, so we had the carry we actually arranged to have the karyotype in blood test done like a year before this time I think with our fourth or whatever I can't actually remember and it happened to be half term week and it got stuck in transit and it was in there too long and they couldn't test it which we were really annoyed about and then we just for some reason we just didn't do it again I don't know why and I wish we did now but so we had the karyotype in blood test um, but we didn't think anything we stupidly were naive again as you are all the time in this journey well we are anyway you, you seriously don't think your luck can get any worse um, so we thought um, every, would everything would be fine and we would just try a different medication to treat the NK cells in January we were due to when was this oh so we miscarried in March and then we didn't try again for all that time sorry I'm missing bits out we didn't try again and we were due to start uh, prednisolone on Jan in January the 1st because obviously Covid happened and we weren't allowed to um, they weren't allowed to prescribe prednisolone before that so we were going to wait until January and then start prednisolone and I was really hopeful about that because I'd seen a load of people try prednisolone before and it worked for them so we were waiting for January to come round to start that and then on New Year's Day when we were due to start the prednisolone we got a phone call about our results uh, from the karyotype and blood test and everything was fine with mine but um, we were told that Josh has a balanced translocation so I am going to go I think I am going to make another a whole other video about a balanced translocation because it's too hard to explain and there's a lot to it um so I will make a separate video but basically um there's nothing wrong with you when you've got a balanced translocation it's just um two sometimes more but two chromosomes have basically 
cut off at certain points and switch so they're exact they're equal but they've just switched they're not the right they're not in the right order and there's nothing wrong with you but the only thing that happens is fertility issues when you're older which is typical um, and his balance translocation is between chromosomes 1 and 4 and then we were told then that that's the reason that's caused all the losses um, and not the NK cells we were told so yeah it was it was literally and to be told that on New Year's Day as well when you think it's a new year everything's gonna we're gonna start afresh and everything's gonna be great it was literally horrendous and obviously for Josh being told that it was him he Josh really took it bad like well anyone would really wouldn't you you'd feel like it was all your fault and that's just not how you see it when you're together in a couple trying for a baby you don't you just don't blame anybody you see it as something you're going through together um so we were told to stop trying just in case we got pregnant again we were bound to have we were told that we would most likely just continue to have losses because most of the babies we get pregnant with are going to be affected with the balance translocation so what happens is hard to explain but with the balance translocation when you have a baby it'll be you can either pass it on and it that baby can have a balance translocation and everything can be fine um but more commonly they'll have an unbalanced translocation where they've switched off and joined um unevenly and then they can be born with serious birth defects or a lot of the time they don't even make it like up like with our losses obviously we've lost them all at six seven weeks so ours seem to not make it past that point so they were saying there was no point trying because we'll just keep putting ourselves through more losses and it's just too much heartbreak so um we were then booked in to see a genetic counsellor where they would talk to you about it in more detail um and they can talk to you about your options and everything like that so we were waiting for that appointment and then in the meantime we had a phone call from um, Professor Quimby from Tommy's because I think it was quite I think we'd waited quite a while for that phone call um but we had um been referred to Tommy's clinic obviously it's a recurrent miscarriage clinic and they're known f they've got good success rates about um you know helping people succeed with having a healthy pregnancy and things like that and that's that was our next step at that time um so while we were waiting to be booked in to see the genetic counsellor we had a phone call from Professor Quimby from Tommy's um, and she didn't know about the balance translocation she just knew about the NK cells and um, before she started I said just to let you know we have been told that Josh has got a balance translocation and she said oh then um, she said I would almost 100% say that your all your losses are caused by the balance translocation and it's nothing to do the, with the NK cell. She said, um, she basically said, um, you can try naturally if you can take the losses. She said it's basically a sperm lottery. You just keep trying and keep trying. You will have more miscarriages, but eventually you will go on to have a healthy baby. She said, and just forget about all um, medication for the NK cells. It's nothing to do with that. So I was like, I was a bit worried about that because obviously I've been told that that's the cause before and now we've been told that that's not the reason um so after that phone call we were like we didn't know what to do really um but we thought do we try naturally and just do we do we just put up with having more losses i mean it's horrible it's a horrible thing to go through but do we just keep trying and just hope for the best or what but obviously after that we waited for our genetic counselor appointment anyway to see what they had said to see what they'd say um and that appointment was a little bit pointless if i'm honest because um in the meantime obviously all you're going to do is google things and i'd done a lot of research on balance translocation and obviously having the um instagram page i started following a few more people who had a balance translocation and was reading about it more basically um and in that appointment, all they did was draw up a family tree on both sides. I'm not quite sure why they drew up one on my side when the balance translocation was on Josh's side. Um, but the family tree was quite pointless because everyone on Josh's side of the family who wanted children have had children. Um, and the people who didn't want children have actually taken measures to make sure they don't have children, if you see what I mean. So... Yeah, it was a little bit pointless. And then they spoke about, um, they said, obviously, 
you can try again naturally but there are there is a chance that you could carry an, a baby with an unbalanced translocation to term and that's just not sometimes they're not compatible with life and like do you want that sort of thing and obviously that's not it's a very hard decision to make like do you want to try naturally and it could work I mean um, since finding out about the balanced translocation I have joined uh, the Facebook group which has been so amazing there's been so many people on there who've really helped me um, even just reading other people's stories not necessarily writing things myself I think I've put like one or two posts on there but anyway um, what was I saying yeah I've seen loads of success stories on there where that people have just tried naturally some people have had like two or three children naturally it also really depends on which chromosomes are affected and how big the breaks are in the chromosomes like I said I will do another video explaining it in more detail um, and then obviously the other option that they mentioned to us was IVF which we we assumed would be the main option our next step anyway um, and they said if you're happy we can refer you to um, the refer you to a waiting list for IVF and we hit all the criteria um, for NHS funding so they um, they said don't give us a decision right now go home think about it and whatever and we phoned the next day and said that we would like to be referred because um, we were told that with the NHS well we know that with the NHS um, IVF the waiting times are so long and but we were also told not to try naturally while you're waiting for IVF because obviously it's, it's expensive and they don't want to get everything in that you need then find out you're pregnant and then whatever but the fact that the wait was two years or 1.5 years or something like that we there was no way we were just going to sit there for two years and do nothing we wanted to try naturally for at least a year while we wait um so that was our plan so they referred us and then um what have i written here uh, um someone i spoke to on instagram told me that um you can transfer your nhs funding to a private clinic where obviously the waiting times are like significantly reduced they're so much quicker um and we just wanted to get the ball rolling we wanted to obviously we'd be, we've been on this journey at this point three and a half years and we didn't want to wait another two years to be five and a half years down the line to then start ivf which could not even be the answer do you know what i mean some people have had like three or four rounds and still haven't had a baby because of the balance translocation it's such a hard diagnosis um so we looked into that straight away we had originally been referred to guys and st thomas's or whatever it's called in london um for ivf on the nhs and we phoned the genetic counselor and said can we be referred to a private clinic can we transfer it to a private clinic and they originally said no so i wrote an email out and i said like i know we can um <laughs> And then I said, so what we did, me and Josh, we um, we phoned around different clinics, um, fairly close to us, distances that we didn't mind travelling, um, to see if they did the IVF that we need, because it would be the PGD or PGTSR or whatever it's called. There's loads of different terms, um, which I'll talk about in another video as well, um, where you it's not just standard IVF you have to send the embryo off for testing to make sure they don't have an unbalanced translocation because otherwise it would be completely pointless just you may as well just try naturally um, so we phoned around different clinics to see um, which clinics did that type of IVF and the accept NHS funding and we found a couple ourselves one of them was four hours away and we just couldn't really commit to that you there's no way you can go four hours there and four hours back each time you need a scan for example when sometimes you have them every couple of days it just wouldn't have worked so um we finally found another one i'll get a dead leg um so then we told the genetic counselor of the clinic that we had found and she said she'd never done it gone this way about it before um, and just to leave it with her and it did take a few months to sort out but we did eventually get through it and we did we did get there um, so our NHS funding was transferred to a private clinic. Um, so the clinic that we are currently with is Oxford Fertility in Oxford, obviously. Uh, 
TFP. TFP? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, and the nice thing about that is we don't have to travel to Oxford every time I need a scan. They have sister clinics that are close by. So um, every time we have a scan we'll just go to the one close by, which is literally 10 minutes down the road for us, for us which is really helpful. Um, and we have already been there for a scan, a baseline scan already. Um, and then we only need to go to Oxford, the actual Oxford Fertility Clinic for egg retrieval and transfer, which is fine. We'll just either, it's only two hours away, so we haven't decided yet whether we're going to stay up there the night or come back the same day. We don't know yet. Um, so what have I got here? Yeah, so we have been given three rounds, um, on the NHS, which I'm absolutely over the moon about. I'm, I feel so lucky to be give, to have been given three rounds because there I've seen so many stories where it just does not work first time, and the chances of of it working first time for us is very slim. And I'm, I just feel so lucky that we've got three goes at this. I just think, yeah, because it's so expensive as well, and I, yeah, you know. Um, but another thing I am going to add is obviously the NK cell side of things. I did put a poll up on my Instagram page and um, said like what would you do? Would you just go through IVF and hope that the NK cells don't play a part and everything's going to be fine? Or would you just take the medication anyway? And it was literally 50-50. It didn't help me at all. Um, but what I did decide to do was ask some of the people on my page who have had NK cell tests if I could see their results. That way I can compare them and if they're, if they're less than most of the people's on there then I just wouldn't bother with medication. I think I compared it to like six or seven people and my results were higher than every single one. So there's no way that I'm going to put myself and Josh through all the emotional side of the stress, the emotional stress that you go through with IVF and me, the physical side of it all. The fact that we've been on this journey for almost four years now, there's no way that I'm gonna not put everything into this. So I, and the annoying thing is, the clinic we're with um, don't support NK cell, they don't believe in, they don't believe that they play a part in miscarriage or anything like that. So they don't do the um, treatment for NK cells, which is really hard. Um, oh, there's a bloody fly in here, which would really annoy me. Um, so then I contacted my old specialist, the lady who um, trans, the lady who referred us, no, the lady who sent us to have the NK cell test done, um, the specialist that we've had basically for the past three years. But because I'm no longer under her care, she can't prescribe me any medication. And then I was thinking, what am I going to do? Um, so. We we have we've got a consultation coming up on the third, which is in two days' time. I don't know when I'm posting this video, so yeah, on the third of August we've got a consultation coming up with a different consultant to see if they can prescribe us medication for the NK cells. Um, ideally, I would like hydroxychloroquine and prednisolone. I mean, the best scenario would be to have all three: hydroxychloroquine, prednisolone, and intralipids. I just don't know how easy it's going to be for me to do the intralipids alongside the IVF. Like, depending on where it's going to be and, you know. So, we just have to talk about that. But I definitely want prednisolone and hydroxychloroquine. Because, yeah, there's just no way I'm going to get this far and not try everything. I'd feel gutted if we were lucky enough to get a healthy embryo and transfer the embryo and then lose it because I would just blame myself, I would just blame the NK cells and I would hate the fact that I hadn't tried the medication and it's going to do me no harm. I mean, there's not very nice side effects, but it's not going to hurt. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So, um, we are due to start the medication for IVF on the 29th or the 30th of August, so it's not very far away now at all. And literally, since we were referred, it's been three months, well it, yeah, when, when we start, 
our medication it would have only been three months since we've been referred it's been so quick and the clinic is literally amazing they've been they've got amazing good communication and they're just so supportive and just lovely I'm just so happy that we're with them um, so if all goes to plan and everything goes well um, would you start the medication on the 29th or the 30th depending on when I'm due on and can you hear that fly it's really bugging me um, and then the egg retrieval will be middle of September sometime but I am going to document it I'm not sure how it's going to work because of how bad I am at editing um, but even if I don't put a video on YouTube I'm definitely going to document it on Instagram so if you do want to follow along follow our Instagram I will put a link down below in the comments or in the description um, what else oh another massive thing that I've been going through um, is I quit my job so I did work as a teaching assistant and I loved it and I would that would be I applied for that job because that was a sort of job I wanted to settle and do for the rest of my life sort of thing I was happy to do that job for the rest of my life it would fit in perfectly with having children and things um, but it just it was horrendous trying to get the time off for appointments um, especially during that time well I had all my four losses my first four losses were while I was working at the school and every time I had a miscarriage I felt pressure about when to come back which wasn't good for my stress levels anyway I mean it's not a nice thing to go through as it is let alone feeling pressured to come back I mean I think I only had like one week off or two weeks off every time I had a miscarriage and it wasn't enough um, and then obviously with the last two pregnancies I had intralipid infusions I think I started before my fifth pregnancy with the intralipids like a few months before I don't think it was the first I don't think I did the intralipids and then I fell pregnant the first time. I can't, can't remember because I remember going quite a few times. And obviously because I had to go each month, um, they just weren't happy with that. And they made it really difficult for me to get the time off. And they were really quite rude about it. And I I just couldn't put myself through any more stress. And I'd rather, I'd rather stress about finding another job. Or... I th the plan was for me to just quit my job while we were going through this treatment thinking that the NK cell treatment was going to work <clears throat> and then once I got pregnant find another job but um, yeah so I literally quit my job I, I had the miscarriage in March the 6th one and I, didn't, I literally just didn't go back after that I, um, wrote, I literally wrote my notice out and I just said I'm not I'm not going to be returning and I did make it obvious in there why I wasn't returning the fact that they were making things difficult for me and whatever so I literally haven't been in a 9 till 5 job since March 2021 but something that I have been doing for the past year is I've started my own business um, and it's something I never expected to do um, but when I did quit my job I thought well I was trying to think well I need a job really where I can work from home so I can take the time off when I need um, for appointments and things like that and basically what I've done is I've started my own sweet business so I'm really enjoying it and it's kicked off really well normally in your first year of business you lose money and you don't get many orders and things like that but it's, it's gone really well so far and I'm planning on doing this for a long time. I don't plan on giving this up anytime soon. Um, and the perfect thing is I work for myself. So any treatment that we do, especially now, is perfect with IVF because I can just have time off from it when I need to or I can carry it on. It's not going to affect anything. My stress levels are literally next to none. It's literally been amazing. Um, but yeah I might do another little video about my business may maybe it's not very TTC related though so I'm not 100% sure but I have got a TikTok page which I can link in the description below as well if you'd like to have a look at that and I can put my website down there too um, so yeah I think that's basically it I've covered everything on here there's probably stuff I've forgotten I mean a lot has gone on in the past two 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 and a half years 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping to do more regular videos and I don't know how regular the videos are going to be and what they're going to be about. If there's anything you do want to ask me, anything that I haven't mentioned or any questions you have, just write them in the comments below and I will answer them, um, them all. Um, and I will be making more videos about the balance translocation, about IVF. Um, and whatever questions you've got I will answer in those videos or I will just answer you in the comments um, thank you so much for watching I hope I haven't bored you bored you? I hope I haven't bored you I hope I haven't made you bored don't I? you know what I mean it just didn't sound right um, so yeah thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video